Hi, I'm Davey, and I think some Republicans are anti-American bullies. I also think that some trans people are cowards. Humans have gotten so obsessed with digging their feet into the sand and saying, here I am, without actually knowing who they are. Or at least, it seems that way. We've all become so afraid of making mistakes that we've closed ourselves off from any opportunity of failure. When was the last time you wrote something with a number two pencil? Writing things in pen doesn't necessarily make you smarter, it just makes you more cautious. We don't get better at writing, we just get better at not making mistakes. For a while, we were learning a lot about ourselves, each other, and how to speak to one another, and how not to speak to one another. But sometime in 2020, we forgot the reason we were doing that in the first place. For a long time, the American dream was the only sustainable way to succeed in this country. And maybe when our parents were our age, that was the only sustainable way. But now, in the the information age it becomes less and less viable, especially when you see how big the gaps are between somebody like Bezos and somebody like my dad. But the world has changed a lot since their time. Quadruple the amount of people, half the resources, hobbies are now side hustles, everyone's addicted to caffeine, nicotine, or worse. The world is in a desperate need for something, something new. But for a long time, no one's been able to figure out what that is. But through all of my personal failures, I believe I figured out exactly what it is. We all heard what happened to Cowboy Bebop, Star Wars, and Fresh Prince recently. But for those who haven't, long story short, these reboots aren't really doing super well. The internet demands the entertainment industry bring back the classics, but as soon as they do, the internet hates it for some reason. The Will Smiths of the world try to help where they can, but to no avail. <laughs> As it up. As it. What's missing? In 2020, the world fell into darkness. Red state or blue state, it didn't really matter who you voted for, we were all just scared, alone, and worried about our families. But fear is a slippery slope, my friends, and here to tell us why is my dear friend, Yoda. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. And what we've done as a people is kind of let that fear snowball into something a little bit more visceral. A lot of people are trying to help and are trying to teach, but what ends up happening more and more every day is it just keeps getting more and more divided. I've always been sensitive to bullies. Ever since I was younger, I've always been putting myself in harm's way to protect the people that couldn't protect themselves. That is until the universe or God or whoever you personally believe in presented me with my first lesson in the form of a chronic stress disease when I was 14 years old. <laughs> Thing is, I didn't understand what that lesson was until about 10 years later, around right now. And I'd love to save you some time time along your journey through these stories I have. Life's really cool, man. Anything I can do to help you get to that point as well, I, I would, yeah, I want to do that. I spent a lot of time being angry, sad, spiteful, alone in a room full of friends, blah blah, the list goes on. But as the world got more miserable, I started to feel less alone. And for a minute there, I kind of had to rejoice, because people started to understand what it felt like to be me for a second. Then I realized that, you know, I had no reprieve anymore. My friends were upset, my family was upset, my co-workers were upset. So there was no place for me to go anymore where I could just relax. Even in the entertainment industry, like Twitch streamers and YouTubers and stuff like that, it seemed like they were all starting to feel the negative sides of this world too. No one got a break. Everyone's just been scared for two and a half years. It makes sense and I understand why, but we gotta start healing, you know what I mean? It personally makes me very sad to see the people I love going through such dark things when I'm kind of here just eating mac and cheese and playing video games all day. But like I said earlier, I don't freak with bullies. And check this out, internet. Y'all made my sister cry. So I'm coming for that ass. <laughs> A lot of you seem to have forgotten the lessons we learned from the Banks family, but my family did not. So allow us to be your tour guides through the unknown. If your parents are too worn out from paying your bills, then maybe they just need a break. Maybe you need a break. This is the place to be. We'll make sure that this leap of faith that is existence is a lot less scary. Oh yeah, so what I said about the shows earlier, what's missing? People don't want the next best thing anymore. Marvel and Disney have been showing us for years the heights that technology can go to to enhance the movie going experience. And why did I personally feel so gypped after I watched the third Spider-Man movie? Check this out. Can we just like stay up here all day? It is so crazy down there. Now that everybody knows you don't really have to hide or lie to people. But this isn't about me. This is hurting a lot of people. People paying to have these movies made are studying what we say on Twitter and what we search on Pinterest to try and piece together what we want in this movie going experience. But the key piece that they're constantly missing is what we talk about in the privacy of our own homes with our friends and our family. How we feel when we watch these movies. How did you feel the first time you watched it? For me, it was exciting, it was new, it was unique, it was something I'd never seen before. It was teaching me while I was having fun. Yeah, it included things from the real world, but it was something all its own. It was about the journey. Cliche, I know, but it's true. It was about how we felt during the ride. When directors started comparing Marvel movies to theme park rides, a lot of people got offended by that. And though it can be argued that they're their own form of cinema, it's not totally wrong. See, when you're riding a theme park ride, you're just kind of enjoying the experience as you go through, you leave the experience and you never think about it again. And in the early days of superhero movies, that's kind of all it was. And now in this world of Kevin Feige making all these alternate reality connections to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's something 
all its own. Something new. Why do you think so many of us nerds like characters like Revan and Ahsoka and Asajj Ventress? Not just because they were rebels, but in a world of absolutes, they represented something kind of in the middle. Something like us. See, we're not just the groups we put ourselves in. We just forgot how to talk to each other and gain new perspectives. And I realize that using clips from popular media means that Disney and UMG is gonna tear my little boy booty apart. But I don't really care that much. I would never forgive myself if I didn't try to do this now. You see, I'm not worried about the YouTube algorithm because I don't really want Susan's money, and I don't want yours either. If you're hanging out with us to get away from the troubles of your life, like your paycheck to paycheck lifestyle, then you take care of you. We'll handle the rest. But to all the Will Smiths of the world who can spare a few dollars and feel connected to anything I'm trying to do, save the f***ing world, I got a Patreon that's run by my sister, so you can help us pay our rent. Hail to the king! See, me and mine know what you're trying to do, Mr. Smith. The problem is you missed the mark. The world doesn't need perfect jawlines and an overproduced piece of It needs a family again. It needs its heart. Oh, and while I've got your attention, Mr. Will Smith, check out what these people are doing right now in the industry. I think they'll have my back once they see what I'm trying to do. Cause I learned this whole revolution, renaissance thing from watching their messages. Oh, that's right brother, I'm on my Dan Harmon, Mr. Rogers shit right now. In all honesty, you guys are kind of being silly. You're afraid of the internet, but the internet's being run by children. And the industry, the entertainment industry, use that to their advantage. Prey on kids to get, cause who's buying these albums? Who's buying, who's watching these shows? It's teenagers, right? So they've taken it upon themselves to kind of make this you know, system that kind of chews up and spits out these celebrities. And every now and again, you get someone come out of it alive and then comes out of it with a better understanding of themselves and, and who want to teach people the dangers of stuff like this. For instance, Jeanette McCurdy. Perfect. But unfortunately, you also get a lot of Britney Spears of the world. Since this has been going on for about 20 years now, we've seen the fallout of all of these kinds of celebrities. So it's not just us, the common people that are being affected by this now. It's, you know, everybody. But yeah, so the internet's run by emotional teenagers with no one to look to, no heroes to guide them. So all they have to look to is Fox and CNN arguing and everyone on the internet clowning everyone on the internet. And no one's learning anything. The next generation is going to come up and be a lot meaner than Gen Z is, trust me, if we don't do something soon. If we've learned that they don't pay attention in school because they don't have the attention span to take a book and read a full chapter because they've been on TikTok all night, then maybe we gotta come up with a new way to teach these kids how to communicate with each other because clearly no one's talking to each other anymore. They're just talking at each other. With no heroes to look to, a lot of people in the world are learning a lot of the wrong lessons. I hope that we can change that together. And yes, before you ask, I have thought of everything. That's the story for next time. I'll see you around. require that each man love his neighbor. It requires only that they live together in mutual tolerance, submitting their disputes to a just and peaceful settlement. Peace need not be impractical, and war need not be inevitable. Cowards. Ooh, man, saying that out loud just... What a way to start a sentence. Number two, Pence. I need to, like, memorize more than just one sentence at a time. It's from the opportunity of failing. Oh my god, that's not what I wrote. Of how to speak to each other. And for a while we learned, uh, especially in the regards of, oh my god. Sometime in 2020 we lost the re- Can we just read what it says? We lost what that re- oh. Nope. It no makes- oh. Side hustles? Oh. Um. Damn it, why can't I never remember the last part? Okay. Side- oh, fuck off, David. <laughs> they missed the mark all- okay. I just forgot that the window is open. Son of a bitch. Well, whatever. It's not that much like leaving it. Taking care of our families to really give a shit. Okay. Or whatever, you know. Oh my god. You see, the middle class didn't disappear. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> our families worrying about our. Oh my god. The middle class. And what we've done as a country is. Well, as a. <laughs> Sad as fuck. It was. Or, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Watch these things. Oh my god. Fuck off. That's not even the right thing. Be used for. That's not what I wrote, so shut up. You know Disney and UMG is gonna be coming for my butt. Lin Manuel Miranda, Jenny, Jenny, Jen, Jenny, Jenny, Tudak, Oh my God. Samurai J. <laughs> Primal. Whatever. Dexter's Lab. Fuck. Um. That's right, motherfuckers. No one but us. Okay. All right. Chill. <laughs> Each other. I'm so hungry. Oh my God. I want to finish this now. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm so, so gentle. worried. I'm so worried.
Thanks, dude. To be a hot boy, you gotta kiss them lips. I